Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're making a Chinese style vegan broth. On today's video, I'm not only gonna teach you how to make this vegan broth step by step, but also gonna tell you exactly why are we putting these ingredients into our broth. Also, I'm gonna teach you a little bit about the traditional Chinese medicine theory of making food. Check it out. Hi new friend, this is Erica right here. I'm a Taiwanese citizen currently living in America. Cooking and traveling is my passion, so I'm here to share with you my favorite Asian recipes. On top of that, I also make video talking about food knowledge and a history background of the dish on this channel. So if that interests you, please subscribe and keep watching. There are many different type of concentrated stock broth, stock cube, stock powder, stock paste on the market that claims that they taste exactly the same as making it from scratch. But if you really take a look at the ingredient list on the back of the packaging, you will find a variety of additives in there that you can't even pronounce. Well, at least I can never pronounce those things. Making broth at home by yourself is such a common thing back in the day, but it's normally pushed off nowadays because of the fear of it is too much trouble or I just don't have enough time. The convenient lifestyle we have right now is definitely a blast, but it's also putting ourselves and the health of our loved ones at risk. So for the sake of our family and ourselves, let's try to make our broth at home today. And I promise there's no hassle. Today we're making the vegan broth that is almost perfect for any type of recipe you have on hand because instead of using the strong flavor ingredients, we're making a flavorful broth but yet mild and approachable flavor that will only enhance the flavor of your recipe but not overtaking it. I use this vegan broth in a lot of different recipes, not only Chinese dishes, but also my ramen, udon noodle, miso soup, hot pot, chawa misu, as well as the egg drop soup that we made last week. And on our next week's video, I'll be teaching you how to make the Japanese deep fried tofu, and the dipping sauce that we're using in that dish will also be added with the vegan broth. So without further ado, let me show you how to make this vegan Chinese style broth at home. It's super easy. Let's start with taking a look at our ingredients today, shall we? Here's are the ingredients that we'll need for today's broth. The cabbage, radish, and corn are all representing the sweet flavor. The soybean sprouts have a very refreshing taste to them and is not only a great choice for boiling, but it can also enhance the vegan protein that we're lacking in our vegan soup. But make sure you get the soybean sprouts instead of the green bean sprouts. It will also be marked as mug beans because green beans are not suitable for long-term boiling and they also have a weird flavor after boiling. Celery is using many Western broth as well. It creates an aromatic foundation of the broth and its natural saltiness and slight bitterness can add depth of flavor into your soup so it's not just sweet anymore. Shiitake mushroom is used in many different broth as well. Although today I'm using the dry shiitake mushroom because first, dry shiitake's flavor is different than the fresh shiitake and better. And second, the dry shiitake had a strong and concentrated flavor that fresh one do not have. And not to mention how dry shiitake's fastness of boiling is really high and the umami flavor it provides. In Chinese medicine, we believe you are what you eat and the food is medicine. Quick little trivia. In Chinese medicine, food are divided into five different nature, which is cold, cool, neutral, warm, and hot. The nature of food is not determined by the actual temperature, but rather by what effects they have on a person's body after consumption. When you continuously consume one type of food but not the other, it creates an imbalance of food nature in your body that will affect your immune system. So the key to a traditional Chinese medicine food theory is you wanna keep your body neutral with the food that you eat. Even though cabbage, shiitake, mushroom, and corn are all neutral food, but radish and celery are both cool type of food. So ginger as a warm type of food can balance it out for our body. If you don't like the flavor of ginger, onion could replace it as well since it belongs to the hot food category, but the flavor might turn out sweeter since cooked onions provide sweet flavor instead of spicy. 
Now we know our ingredient and exactly why we're putting all these things into our broth, the exact amount of the ingredient will be listed in the description box down below. For this recipe, the weight of the ingredients is just a guide. You don't have to have the exact same amount, but just similar will be fine. Just like this cabbage, I steal a little bit of it for my lunch today, so I'll be using less than half, but it's totally all right. Since you already know the flavor each ingredient provides, you will know how more radish means more sweetness and more shiitake mushroom means more umami, etc, etc. Now I have talked enough right here, so let me show you exactly how to make this Chinese style vegan broth. The first thing we need to do today is to wash and soak our dry shiitake mushroom. If we're making mushroom broth today, we might need more mushroom, but today we're just making a simple, basic vegan broth that could be used in any kind of recipe. So we don't want too strong of a mushroom flavor, but just a little umami in it. So today we'll be using three dry shiitake mushrooms. But before we soak our mushroom, we gotta make sure it is clean. Put your mushroom in a bucket and add water and let it soak for three minutes so the surface is a bit softer. Then pour out the water and use one tablespoon of cornstarch to rub off the dust and impurity of the mushroom. The starch is actually a great tool to wash your dry mushroom because it will not only create friction to rub up the dirt on the surface, and it will also suck up all the impurity on the surface of the mushroom. When that's done, rinse it off several times until the water is pretty much clear. That means your mushroom is clean to soak now. Use two cups of water that is around 30 degrees Celsius or 86 degrees Fahrenheit, but not hotter. And combine with one teaspoon of sugar to soak your mushroom for 30 minutes. Adding sugar into your water will higher the water pressure and make sure the umami and all the nutrients will be kept inside a mushroom instead of leaking into the water. And the reason why I want to wash up my mushroom clearly before I soak it is because today we're going to add the soaking mushroom water into the broth as well. So if you have impurity in it, that will be gross for your stock. While the mushrooms are soaking, let's prep the rest of our ingredients. To save some cooking time, we want to increase the heated surface area of the food. So chopping your radish and celery into smaller pieces will help. The cabbage, I'll chop it into four chunks that still connects it to the base so it's easier to remove later. You can toss in the whole corn or chop it up into two like me, it doesn't really matter. And the last thing we want to do is we want to chop our ginger into four pieces too. Get a big pot and add in two liters of water. And then toss in all of the ingredients besides mushrooms. The ingredients seem like a lot at the beginning, but over time it will shrink and cover by the broth. Now we'll cover up the pot and turn on the heat and wait till it starts boiling. When you can see the steam coming out and you can hear the bubbling noise, open up the lid and let it simmer for 60 minutes. When your mushroom is done soaking, toss in the whole bowl and call it the day. The reason why I don't want to keep my lid on today is because I'm trying to create a more concentrated broth so it's easier for me to store. But let's say if you're making this stock today just for a hot pot or noodle that you're going to use right away, you can keep the lid on, it doesn't really matter. A vegan broth does not require longer than an hour to boil, so when it's ready, filter out the ingredients and it's done. The Chinese style vegan broth is ready. You can keep the broth in the fridge or freezer, depends on your usage. You can also just drink it as it is with some added salt. It tastes actually really, really good. Now I'm gonna let the broth cool down a little bit before I put it into the fridge to save some energy. But in the meantime, let's learn some Chinese. The word of the day today is Su Gao Tang, vegan broth. The first character, su, could mean vegan, vegetarian, or plant-based diet. And the word gao tang means broth or soup stock. So su gao tang is the Chinese version of the vegan broth. Thank you for cooking with me to the end. Let me know if you like this recipe by giving this video a thumbs up. It's only gonna take you a second, but it means a lot to me. I make video on YouTube every Thursday, so remember to hit that bell and you'll never miss out. Last but not least, don't forget to subscribe on my channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you next Thursday. Bye!